Hello, this is John. Thanks for joining me again. I'm sorry about my apartment, but I'm in the middle of moving, so most of my furniture is gone already. Today, I want to examine something that we missed previously in Archimatics, and that's the ability to create complex relationships between multiple parameters. Up to this point, we've created relationships between only two parameters, but let's take a look at how you can do it with more parameters and how you can create your own parameters as well. To do a quick recap of relations, let's create two basic objects, a cube and a cylinder. Let's start by binding the height parameter of each to each other so that they will always have the same height. I expanded the controls and I'm taking the output of the height of the cylinder and putting it into the input of the height of the box. If I click on the relationship, the line that connects them, you will see the expressions below. It's a two-way relationship. The box height equals the cylinder height. The cylinder height equals the box height. I mentioned before that you can change these. They don't have to be the same relationship. The problem with this relationship is it's between only two parameters. If we wanted to include a third object, for example a sphere, we wouldn't have an easy way to add its parameters to this relationship. I'm going to move the sphere aside for a moment and position us so that we can see all three objects. Now remember, we already have a parameter on box height, so when I change its height, the cylinder height is adjusted accordingly. And the same goes the other way around because it's a two-way relationship. But if I wanted to change the radius of the sphere, currently it doesn't affect any other parameters. One way to affect parameters of all three objects is to create grouper variables. Let's start by selecting all three objects and creating a grouper. If you expand the controls of the grouper, it will only show size X, size Y, and size Z. But underneath is a little plus which allows you to create more variables. Let's start by expanding the grouper so we can see the object inside. You can do this by double-clicking the thumbnail icon. As you can see, there are three objects inside represented by the green nodes. The brown node on the left is the grouper itself. If I double-click the thumbnail of it, I will come back out. And double-clicking the thumbnail out here puts me back inside the grouper. I'm going to start by breaking the connection between the cylinder and the box. I highlighted it and I click delete on the bottom. Then I'm going to create three new variables. One, two, three. They're all going to be of type float. The first one I will call cylinder height or sil height, sil h. That's good enough. The second one I will call box h for box height. And the last one I will call uh, sphere r for sphere radius because that's what determines the size of the sphere. I'm going to expand my node a little bit so I can see the entire name. Now I'm going to bind the object variables to these grouper variables. So for the cylinder, I'll take the height and bind it to our variable called sil h. For the box, I will also take its height and bind it to the variable called box h. And for the sphere, it's a little bit trickier because the radius of the sphere actually comes from its shape. And to have access to it, you can click the little purple box on the left side to expand the shape that it's created from. So in this case, it, it's a half circle, 
that gets revolved. And that half circle has the radius parameter over there. So I'm going to take the radius and bind that to our sphere r parameter that we created for the grouper. So now, if I change the height of any of these objects, it will change the height of the variable in the group, grouper accordingly. As you can see, right now the still age variable is moving up and down. And if I change the radius of the sphere, the sphere r is also changing. You might notice that the size x, size y, and size z are also changing, and that's because those indicate the bounds of uh, all of the objects that are inside the grouper. So if I'm making the grouper larger, it will um, it needs to change the size of the bounding box to encompass all of those objects, and that's what the size x, size y, and size z represent. That's all nice and fine, but what I really want is when I change the size of one object, it should change the size of all three objects. So let's create some expressions. Expand the sphere R parameter in the grouper, and you will see a field where you can input expressions. We need more than one expression, but luckily there's a plus sign which allows us to add more expressions, as many as you will need. These expressions will be evaluated when the sphere R parameter changes. Firstly, when we change the sphere parameter, I want to affect the cylinder height. So our cylinder height parameter is called sill age. So I will type the expression sill age is equal to, let me move the mouse so you can see it, and I'll just set it equal to sphere radius, sphere R. Okay, and then I want to add another expression, the box height. So box H is also equal to sphere R. Hit enter, and we are done. So now if I change my sphere radius, you can see that it's changing the height of the cylinder as well as the rectangle. But if I change the height of my cylinder or the height of my rectangle or box it's not affecting the other objects yet. This is because the parameters are only the expressions are only evaluated when I'm changing the sphere R parameter. So what we need to do is add these expressions also to our other parameters. So for box H I want to add the expression that cylinder H is equal to box H and add another expression that sets the sphere R is equal to box H. So now if I change the box height it's going to affect the other two objects as well. If I do that with a sphere it's going to affect the two other objects as well but the cylinder we haven't bound expressions to that yet so that one does not affect the other parameters yet so we're going to add that next so expand the sill h and for expressions put box h equals sill h and now let's add another expression so I'll click the plus button and I will set the sphere radius equal to cylinder height and we are done now if you try changing the height or the radius of any of the objects you will see that the others act accordingly so this is one way that you can use parameters inside a grouper node to do advanced expressions between many uh, th different parameters, as many as you like. The only real rule is that the left-hand side of the expressions can only have one parameter, but the right-hand side can be a combination of multiple parameters. So, for example, I could have said that cylinder height equals the sphere radius times uh, the box height. 
So now, if I were to change the sphere radius, the cylinder height would go crazy. See, it's going much faster than the box height because I'm multiplying it in an expression. But that expression is on the sphere radius, so if I were to change the cylinder height, we would still have the one-to-one -one relationship that we established in the expressions and the same for the box. However, as you can see when I let go of the mouse, the cylinder height is snapping to a higher position because we have that expression created under the sphere radius and whenever sphere radius is changed it evaluates that expression. You can use this method to create complex expressions to drive the behavior of objects in the way that you need and we will be using this when we create the European building which is a project I'm working on and I will share with you in another playlist because we need to drive the location of different levels of the building according to multiple levels below it. A couple other things I want to mention. These parameters that we created in the grouper, they're now accessible outside of the grouper as well. If I double click the thumbnail to go outside of the grouper, you can see the sphere R, box H, and still H parameters are available outside of it, and I can bind these to objects outside of this group as well. Lastly, I want to share something with you that was pointed out to me by Mr. Steve Watkins in the comments of video 6 of this playlist, which is about groupers. I was unable to find the height of this archway, which comes from the Archimatics library in either the transform or the controls. I was able to change the height of the arch by dragging it up and down, but I couldn't find the parameter under transform or controls and I didn't know how to create a relationship with it in the node editor. The reason for that is quite simple. The arch is actually an extrusion of a shape, so obviously the shape itself would be found under the plan, which would be the purple input. If you click on the purple arrow to the left of plan, it will expand the shape, where obviously you can, hide, you can find the height and other parameters associated with that shape. Thanks for your patience. It's been a little bit chaotic for me because of my move right now. I want to share with you a few topics that I will be covering in uh, other playlists in the near future. As I promised, we are going to be creating a practical application of Archimatics by making a European style hotel or building and I'm already working on that playlist. Um, I had a request by Mr. Taylor Moore to do a video combining Archimatics and Surforge. I haven't used Surforge yet, but I have purchased it and I'm going through tutorials to learn it so that we can do a playlist on that as well. Other than that, I'm also planning to do some playlists on Terragen and World Machine to show you how to create terrains for 3D. I also want to do a playlist on photogrammetry, which is about taking pictures of a still object from multiple angles and then converting it into a 3D object which you can use in your games. So that's plenty of topics to keep me busy for a while, but if you have any special requests, please let me know. Lastly, I just want to thank everybody for your views and your comments and your subscriptions. It makes me feel like I'm doing something productive and helpful and beneficial, and I'm looking forward to making many more videos.